Hi, I'm Pat Keegan and welcome back to the DIY Home Build channel. Well, it's been a long journey and as we near the end, we'll be constructing the last cabinet of our kitchen series. This cabinet is going to be a sink based cabinet and it's going to be obviously mounted just to the right of the Lazy Susan cabinet that we built in the previous set of videos. In this video, I'm going to start with the face frame. As I mentioned way back in the first video that we posted, um, you can do the face frame first or you can do the cabinet carcass first. It really doesn't matter. I just prefer to do the face frames first. And this face frame is going to be 46 inch in total width. And our cabinet, on the, on the right side of the sink base cabinet that's going to be exposed to the kitchen, I like to have the face frames flush with the side of the cabinet. It's just a personal preference. I don't want to see any overhang, even if it is a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Maybe nobody notices. That's okay. That's just me. On the other side of that cabinet, I'll leave about a quarter of an inch of space between the face frame and the side panel of the box. So while the, the face frame will be 46 inches in width, the overall cabinet will be 45 and 3 quarter. So as I said, I'm going to start with the face frame. Okay, I've got all the pieces that I need cut to their final length. Now I'm just going to rip them all to two inches wide using the table saw. Alright, now I've got all of the pieces of the face frame that I need cut to their length and their proper width of two inches that we did on the table saw. So now it's time for some pocket holes. I know you've seen this jig probably a dozen times in the last few videos, so um, I'm going to make quick work of this. I've got one mounted in there already. It's important to note that the two 31 inch styles that are going to go on the left and right side of this face frame don't need any pocket holes, but every other member needs two pocket holes in each end. I've gone ahead and made my mark eight inches down from the top of this style because I want a six inch gap. Um, between this top rail and the mid rail and the reason I want that six inch gap is because if you remember back from the other video with the bank of four drawers each of my drawers is about seven inches so I want to carry that seven inch theme um, you know at eye level there for the top drawer you know throughout the uh, throughout the kitchen so that it retains some symmetry so now it's just time to put a little bit of glue on and get that snugged up and I'm just going to use these face, face frame clamp tighten it up and remember I'm using the fine thread screws not the coarse thread screws the fine thread screws are what I need because this is cherry which is a harder wood than the plywood obviously or the or pine or something like that so and I'm just going to go ahead and put them in I'll put these two in. Remember that the face that I like best faces down because I'm working on the back of the cabinet or the back of the face frames are facing up. So this has like a few little defect knots in it, like very small, but I don't want that. So. Uh, we'll put a little bit of glue on there. And each one of these. We'll snug this up and just repeat. Okay, with, the la with this done, I'm ready to put in the last piece, which will fit just inside, and it's just barely fits. I mean, it, I can feel a little bit of friction between these pieces, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. However, I know that this piece that I cut here is 32 inches from end to end, so I'm going to make two small marks at I'm going to make two small marks at 32 inches here and 32 inches here and that's just so that 
I don't end up with something strange, you know, aligned to it or whatever. I got to make a mark six or uh, eight inches down from the top so that this one goes in properly. All right, that's clamped. Two screws up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the excess glue, if any, that kind of bled over, because I talked about that too before. And here you have your face frame done for the um, sink base cabinet. Next, we're going to start on the carcass. As is nothing new with all of these videos, I've had the um, uh, width of the cabinet back and other pieces trimmed up at the supply house where I get this uh, pre-finished maple plywood so it's already ripped to um, its height. And I'm just going to finish it up here with the circular saw. Um, if if you watched the previous video, you saw how I assembled the cut list, so I'm just going to be working off the cut list. And again, as always, I'm going to make these cuts with the circular saw for the other pieces, and when needed, I'll just trim the inch or two or whatever I need off to fine tune it on the table saw. All right, we're almost ready for pocket holes, but what I need to do first is make sure that my toe kicks are notched out of each of the side panels for this. Uh, sink base. So I've already got my panel jig up. You've seen me cut these. Um, I'm just gonna, I, I've already measured out three and a half inches in and three and a half inches up, which is what our toe kick, toe kick space is. And I'm just gonna go up to that line and just touch it with the saw and, and then do the same thing with the other side and just finish it up with a handsaw and the toe kicks will be notched out. All right, I've got all the pieces of my plywood cut, and I've got the two notches for the toe kicks um, taken out of the side panel. So now it's time for pocket holes. On the two side panels, I'm gonna just drill pocket holes on the inside um, front edge to be able to receive the face frame um, of the cabinet. On the bottom panel, I do pocket holes all the way around so that from underneath I can anchor it to the back piece to the sides and to the front of the, the face frame for the bottom rail. On the back piece, all I need to do is put pocket holes on the left side and the right side because they're going to screw into the sides of the cabinet. Okay, now that I've drilled all my pocket holes, I'm ready for some assembly. So I've got one of the side pieces on the left side already set up here. I've got the back. Um, if you remember, I like to keep the back recessed in about a quarter of an inch and so I've set a quarter inch piece of um, plywood underneath this piece so that I can just line this up like so, flush it up at the bottom, clamp it in place with, with the uh, 90 degree angle jig, uh, 90 degree angle clamp, and then make sure it's pressed down and I remember to take my um, coarse threaded screws and we're just going to drive everything home. Okay, with the two sides attached now to the cabinet, it's time to put in the bottom. And I'm just going to set the bottom in here. It's a good snug fit in the corners, which is important. And then the screws will draw the sides up together like so. Um, one of the things that I do, um, you can see it on the drawing, the SketchUp drawing in the previous video, but I just want to point out that the distance between the bottom of the cabinet and the top of the bottom rail is five and a half inches. Remember, my toe kick is three and a half inches high, and then I'm gonna go two inches beyond that with the bottom rail. So I wanna make sure that this bottom shelf, that the top of the bottom shelf, sits right at that five and a half inch mark or just below. And in order to do that, I've cut a piece of scrap block four and three quarters inches. 
because I know that the four and three quarter plus the three quarter thickness of the shelf will give me the five and a half inches which will align the top of this shelf to the top of the bottom rail or be just a little bit underneath it. So I'm going to flush this up really snug so that I can push the bottom shelf against it. And then I'll, I'll move this um, scrap lock here to both sides just to make sure that we're all perfectly down at about four and three quarter inches from the bottom. Okay, I've tipped the cabinet back up so now it's resting on its side panels. And what I want to do now is install this middle panel that's going to define the space here for a pull-out shelf. And actually it's going to be one large door as we've discussed before that's going to pull out and it's going to have a couple of bays in there. So in order to do that I'm going to need to put or use two sets of the drawer slides that you've seen get installed with the left base cabinet. And the way I'm going to do it is you can attach the face frame first if you'd like and then, you know, butt it up against the side. That's okay too. Um, but the way I'm going to do this is I know that if I take my tape measure or if you look at the Google SketchUp video that I posted that from the outside edge to the inside edge here is exactly 10 inches. However, if I'm going to use spacer blocks, I need to take into account this side panel. So it's really going to be nine and a quarter because the side panel is three quarters of an inch. Like so. Somewhere in the back. Make sure your dust is out there. And then take this piece and put it up against like so. Then I'll be able to just drill in or screw into the bottom. Okay. Now I've got the center divider in, it's time to put on our face frame. I've got my handy little step stool here that's going to help me out. I've got the glue that I'm going to use. And again, I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on all the edges here. Doesn't need to be a lot, it's just enough to get it to stick here. Because I don't want this to really move, and it is a large frame, I'm just going to put a very light clamping pressure on it. It's a little bit of an angle, but that's okay. Again, I just need it to hold it while I put some pocket screws in. Okay, I flipped the cabinet now, or rotated it, so that the, the cavity is facing, the top is facing the camera. Um, what I do want to make sure, though, is that I've got good, um, that, that this panel side here is flush with this edge as much as possible. I, I want to do as little sanding as possible. So I'm going to actually put two clamps on here just to kind of help me out. Again, gentle clamping pressure. You don't have to crank it such that you dent the wood. If you dent the wood, you're going to have to steam it out to get rid of that dent, and I don't want to be doing that. So you can just barely make it so that it's you know exactly flush, or even with the face frame sticking a hair over, but not, not much more than that. Sorry for the back of my head in the way, but it's tough to get at it. Okay, now that I've got the right side of the cabinet, which is your left here, um, anchored in and everything is flush and the glue is wiped out, I can go ahead and start the center panel. So I've, again, just a clamping pressure to keep this, you know, flush with the, um, you know, flush with the side panel because that's going to be the one that I'm mounting the hinge or the drawer slide rather on. So I just want to make sure it's flush and go ahead and just slight clamping pressure. There's not a lot needed 
I don't need to crank down on it really hard. Um, and again, using the fine threaded screws, I'll go ahead and anchor this side. Okay, I've got all the sides done. Now I'm just gonna finish up and do the inside panel that's gonna be facing the Lazy Susan cabinet, and then we'll be done. So that concludes the construction of the um, sink base cabinet with respect to the carcass and the face frame. All that's left to do now on this part of it is to sand everything smooth and then apply a coat of stain and three coats of polyurethane. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thanks very much, and um, we'll see you next time.